Ariel Hawani at the Affliction Weigh-Ins in Anaheim, California at the Honda Center, and I'm being joined by my very special friend, my co-host on the MMA Rated Radio Show. We're taking this to the next level. We're doing video now. Would you look at that? Ben, folks, Ben, how's it going? It's going great. If I'm on video, I feel awesome. It's a rush. This is pretty cool, right? It is pretty cool. I can't lie to you. It's pretty cool. All right, well, uh, we're just at the weigh-ins, and uh, not that much news until we don't see Paul Buentello and Alex Emelianenko uh, not weigh in. You got any scoop for us? What's going on with that story? Uh, from what I hear, Alex did not meet his licensing requirements, whatever that means. I, I mean, I can envision at least three different scenarios where that could be the explanation. Seems like there should be a little more detail on it, but that's all they're telling us right now. And as you know, California has some of the, the toughest uh, the, the toughest state athletic commission and their licensing requirements are really difficult. So who knows what it means? Um, but yeah, didn't even give them a chance to step on the scale. So it must be something pretty final. They, they decided to call the bout off. Yeah, it looks like the uh, California State Athletic Commission has struck again. So other than that, I mean, it looks like Paul might not even have a fight tomorrow. Are you hearing any potential opponents? No, no. From, from what I hear, it sounds like the bout is just completely off and, you know, Paul trained for nothing. It's, it's really tough on this, especially in California, to, to pull together a, a late opponent. I mean, maybe they'll try and do something, maybe they'll just scratch it all together, but yeah, right now it looks like no fight for Paul Puntello. What about a three-way match? Maybe because, you know, the Emelianenko brother is out, maybe put him in there, a triple threat, WWE styles. You know what, I like the sound of a three-way match. I just, I just think we're entering into a whole new realm there. All right, well, what about the Wayne experience itself? I mean, there's the band set up for Megadeth, there's you know, all the lights, uh, you got the huge ring back here. What do you think of uh, the job they did for their first time out? For the first time out, it's not too bad. There are definitely some moments there where you could tell this is the first time they've done this. Um, not quite as smooth all the way through. Yeah, the, the Megadeth band setup is pretty odd. Maybe, maybe Megadeth insists on uh, having all their gear in place. Uh, you know, they're Megadeth, so yeah, why not? But. Uh, yeah, overall, pretty smooth. I was really surprised at what a negative reaction Tim Sylvia got from the fans and the overwhelming positive reaction for Fedor. Um, but, uh, yeah, that just leads me to believe it's going to be a great night. A little surprised to hear Trump say that it's sold out and that pay-per-view is going through the roof. I don't think either one of those are facts at this point. But, you know, I guess when you're Donald Trump, you just say stuff, right? You just say stuff for the hell of saying stuff. But let me first ask you about Tim Sylvia because it seems as though he is the only guy that will get Americans to root against him, you know, when he's fighting a Russian. What do you, what do you make of all that? I mean, why do people just not like this guy? You know, I don't know. I think, and this sounds weird, but I think that part of it is because Tim Sylvia seems like he really wants to be liked, um, but then can't really just admit that. You know, he has, kind of tries to portray this, well, I don't care what you think, I'm here to win, like that kind of thing. I don't care if you think it's boring, whatever, I'm going to do whatever I have to do to win. Um, but you can tell, like, you know, he definitely, he wants the fans' approval. And that, that strange mix, um, for some reason, I mean, you've got to go one direction or the other, like, hey, I really want your, your appreciation and your love from the fans, or to hell with you, I don't care what you think. And he seems, like, kind of caught in the middle, and a few boring fights, and people just just love to hate him, I think, at this point. I don't think it's anything even re responding to his personality anymore. It's just people have made up their minds about Tim Sylvia. Does he have any chance tomorrow night against Fedor? Yeah, of course he has a chance. Big guy who hits hard like Tim Sylvia and is smart, you know, he's, he's strategically, he's a good fighter. Tim Sylvia always has a chance. He can always land a good punch. Um, I wouldn't bet on it. I mean, Fedor's Fedor, and I just don't think, I think that Fedor has some, some weaknesses that could be exploited, but I think a big, lanky striker like, like Tim Sylvia with just a decent ground game, I don't think that's what it's gonna take to beat Fedor. Now, this is the first time it really hit me. This is a pretty stacked card. I mean, this is a stacked Absolutely. card. It, it's unbelievable when you see like Matt Lindlin like eighth from the bottom, you know what I mean? It's yeah. incredible. Which fight are you looking forward to the most? Well, this is just pretty personal, but for me, um, Ben Rothwell, Andre Olowski. Not only do I think it's going to be one of the most competitive fights on the card, but, you know, through the IFL, uh, writing about Rothwell, and, and I've talked to him so much and, and followed his career so much, um, it almost feels like, like I have a personal stake um, in the fight, as, as strange as that is to say. Um, but I think it's going to be a great fight, and it's going to be really interesting to see um, where Rothwell is, you know, that, that's a really good test right now is Andre Olovsky. A lot of people think Rothwell is just propped up by the IFL. To some extent, yeah, I mean, where else would he have fought Krzysztof Szczynski twice? But, um, but yeah, he, I think it's going to be a great, great fight just technically, and I think it's going to be um, really meaningful for both guys' careers. Don't hang on Krzysztof, man. The guy's on uh, the no. Ultimate Fighter 8. Hey, no, Krzysztof's a, a great guy, but, you know, he... He went out there and he, he beat Kristoff pretty convincingly the first time, only in the IFL where that 
team you know, schedule scenario, or are you going to come back around and fight him again and beat him even quicker? And you've been following Ben uh, leading up to this bout. Uh, are you noticing him uh, having some maybe pregame jitters? I mean, this is the biggest fight of his career, no doubt, and a guy who's you know, fought 30-plus bouts. So he's been there before, but on this stage, never. Right. Uh, I think he does have some jitters. Um, I talked to him Wednesday, and he was saying, you know, I'm, I feel really calm. I'm, I'm not nervous at all. Um, I feel, like, really focused. He was saying that the, the bus ride from the hotel here in Anaheim out to the, uh, where the, the hotel where the press conference was uh, in L.A., you know, they hit some traffic. A lot of the fires are kind of getting annoyed. Why can't we just, you know, have a press conference, like, at our hotel so we don't have to deal with all this stuff? And he was saying, hey, you know, I was, I was completely calm, though. I, I didn't really worry about it. And then I talked to some guys, some, like, Militich and, uh, and some of the guys who had been training with him and came here to corner him, and they told a little different story. They said, well, yeah, we can tell he's a little nervous. He's kind of snapping at us when he wouldn't normally. So... Yeah, I think you know the nerves are getting to him, but to some extent, that's a good sign. I mean, if you if you get this close to the fight and you're not a little bit nervous, then either you're not taking it seriously or something's wrong with you, or you're Fedor. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, you look at the lines, you look at the betting lines, and they're wide. I mean, it, 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 clearly you can tell who's the favorite and who's not. So I'm going to put you on the spot here. Give me one lock. If I want to put some money down tomorrow, give me one prediction that is bound to happen 100%, 100%, excuse me, the Ben Folk stamp of approval. The Ben Folk stamp of approval, the Ben Folk's lock, Josh Barnett. Absolutely. Josh Barnett slash Father Time will be too much for Pedro Hizo. Um, TKO by cuts, maybe, that, that, that familiar friend for Pedro? I don't know. But as long as Josh doesn't go out there and get it in his head, like, well, I'm going to knock him out. I'm going to do exactly to him what he did to me. As long as he doesn't do that, and Josh is such a smart guy um, that I, I can't see him doing that. Um, but as long as he doesn't do it, as long as he plays his game, then I just don't see how he loses to Pedro Hizzo. All right, uh, and go call your local bookie, and, or as Michael Buffer likes to call him, Pedro Rizzo. He was, yeah. he was messing up those R's for he the Brazilians. A couple names, it seemed like they got different every time he said it. <laughs> they, they certainly did. All right, Ben, well, great to finally meet you in person. The MMA Rated Radio Show, we're now taking it to the MMA Rated Video Show. I guess that's the new name for now. Uh, enjoy the fights, and thanks always for the time. You too.